Hey, what's up? My name is Josh. I'm from Breaker Stereo and Performance. And if you're in the market for a double duty radio that's loaded with features because your current car stereo doesn't cut it, you're going to want to stick around for this video. We'll be going over Kenwood's DVX 9707S, which is a multimedia head unit with a 6.9 inch monitor, CD, DVD player, has Bluetooth, four camera inputs, and best of all, wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. So don't go anywhere because I'm about to break this radio down and show you all the cool stuff that it has to offer. Now towards the end of this video, we'll be going over the pros and cons list. We'll also give you our overall rating on this radio. And when we're finished, we're going to do a section called What's the Difference? And that we're going to compare the model below and the model above this radio and Kenwood's lineup to help you make a decision as to what head unit is best for you. Now you can get this directly on our website. Just click the link in the description below and you'll be sent directly to the product page. Now remember, we do have easy financing available. Apply directly on the website and get approved instantly and we'll send this awesome radio to you directly. Okay, so now on to the review. We're gonna be going in depth in this video, so we'll list the table of contents in the description below so you can jump around if you're looking for something in particular. Now wireless CarPlay and Android Auto is a premium feature that does not come with every touchscreen out there. So most entry level units will require you to use a cable to transfer over these features. Now this unit obviously does not need that. So let's say you forget your cable at home or in the office or one of your teenage kids grabs the cable and doesn't return it, like that happens to me a lot, then you still will be able to use these features. It also does wireless mirroring for Android. So when you pair your phone, you will be able to mirror whatever's on your phone onto this screen. Now this is useful for video apps like Netflix, Hulu, and then YouTube, but of course you're not going to want to ride around binge watching on your latest Netflix series. But if you're waiting in the car and your wife went to go grab something really quick from the store, then you can watch a few minutes while she's out doing that, but if yours is like mine, maybe a couple episodes. So this unit will also mirror for iPhones, but it will require you to use a cable and you also need to download a cable app. It's called Mirroring for Kenwood and it looks like this. But we'll go over that a little bit later in this video. Another good feature this has that most entry radios do not have, it has iData Maestro. So let's say your stock radio controls or display some of the vehicle settings such as climate control, oil life, and tire pressure sensor. The iData link piece will allow you to transfer that over to this unit. Now that module is sold separately along with the vehicle specific harness and you will be required to flash the software from the computer to the module. But if you have some important features in your vehicle and you want to retain it, then this is a great feature. You also have the ability to add as many as four cameras to this radio. So you can do a front camera a rear camera, a dash camera, and either a secondary rear camera or even a side camera. Okay, we'll go over more of the features as we go along, but for now let's do an unboxing and then we'll go over the connections behind the radio. All right, so you have your warranty card, your owner's manual. This is the GPS antenna. Now again, it does not come with GPS. It uses that for your navigation apps. You got two USBs. The gray is for the iPhone and Apple CarPlay. And the black is for Android Auto. Your main harness, your Bluetooth mic, trim ring, hardware, and then these are keys to release the radio from the cage. So on the back of this radio, uh, we got the two USBs, the main plug, you have an AV input, and that does require a separate cable for that. You also have the iData link input, that's here. This round disc plug is for your Sirius XM, tuner box to be plugged into, GPS antenna, Bluetooth mic, then you have three sets of four volt pre-outs, front, rear, and sub. There also is an AV output audio that requires an additional cable, your antenna input, then you have your cameras. You have your front camera, you have your rear camera, you have your third view camera, and then you also have video out. And then the dash cam, plug-in is right here. So there's a Kenwood branded dash cam that will plug directly into here. All right, so when you first turn on the radio, that's what it looks like. I'm gonna start with the iPhone, so we're gonna go ahead and plug in the iPhone real quick. And then as you do that, it takes a second, but it will populate. So there is your CarPlay. If we scroll to the right, then you're able to see all the icons that come up, all the apps that will be able to populate. So if you have Pandora, it will allow you to uh, go to your Pandora profile, and then you go to recent, you can go to stations, and then let's say, if you hit this left button here on the bottom, this will take you back to your main menu. And then from here, as you can see, you have all your navigation apps. So you have regular Apple Maps. Uh, there is Google Maps here. And then if you use Waze, it has Waze as well. It does have Spotify, it does have Audible. Listen to your books while you are driving around. All right, so that is wired. 
CarPlay, okay? Now, if we do wireless, then you do have to pair this thing up. So let me show you how that's done. So the first thing you want to do is you go, get the little matrix here, go into setup, and then you're going to go to AV, all right? And then you're going to go to Apple CarPlay list. Okay, and then we're going to add, okay? Now here it says, please open your Bluetooth settings. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go into settings and then I'm going to go into general and then I'm going to go into CarPlay, okay? And then from here, you can see DDX 9707S. So I'm going to go ahead and tap that here on the bottom. And then as you can see on the screen, it populates um, and I'm going to hit yes. And then on the a phone, I'm going to hit pair. And then, yes, let me go ahead and sync my contacts. And then now if you look on the radio, it's processing and when this thing pairs up, then you will see this light up green. And there you go. All right, there it is. All right, so now we're hooked up. CarPlay and there's no wires. Dope, right? Cool. Okay. So that's that. Now let's go ahead and do the mirroring. So the mirroring does require you to plug in the phone. I'm gonna go home and then I'm gonna hit the matrix here and I'm gonna do USB mirroring. Okay, uh, and it's asking me, the current CarPlay connection will be closed. Is that okay? Yes. All right. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is go on the phone and you have to download this app. It's gonna say mirroring for Kenwood, all right? So that's it, make sure you have that. And now what you're gonna do is you're going to screen record. So you have to hit screen record here. Now, don't just tap the screen record, you have to actually hold it in for a couple seconds. So a few seconds and then it's, you'll see it says mirror for Kenwood. And then we're gonna hit start broadcasting. So let's just go to Netflix, check it out. And uh, boom, there you go. All right, so there it is. There is uh, mirroring on the iPhone. All right, perfect. All right, let's talk about Android. All right, so what we're gonna do is plug in the Android first. All right, and then from there, we're gonna hit Android Auto on the radio. Okay. All right, so there it is, that pairs up. As you can see, that's Google Maps. We'll go through a couple features on Android Auto. So let's start with the home page. So you hit the button on the lower left hand, and then you have all your apps that will populate that you're able to use. So you have your maps, you have Spotify, music, your phone, calendar, news, podcast. And then if you scroll upward, then there are a few more here. All right, so let's just kind of go into a few of these. Let's start with Spotify. So. From here, you're able to control your Spotify and you have what's in the queue and then you're able to search if you like. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. Now let's go over to Google Maps. So tap that there. And then from here, you're able to either type in where you wanna go. And then from there, you can type where you wanna go or you want to make it easy on yourself while you're driving around you can easily just go hit the button here and that will activate the microphone and from there you can say where you want to go or uh, whatever destination that you're looking for okay cool all right so that is that so that's wired android auto let's do wireless so let's go ahead and unplug this here so i'm just going to hit android auto here it's unplugged android auto and then, boom, so we're good to go. Android is, auto is good, no wires plugged into it, so we're awesome there. All right, cool. Uh, so let's do the mirroring, the wireless mirroring. So the first thing you wanna do is hit wireless mirroring on the stereo, and then you have to go to the phone. All right, so let's go into all right, the menu. And what we're looking for is something that's gonna say smart view or mirroring or something like that. And right here, it's a smart view. View your phone screen or play content on a TV, speaker, or Chromecast device. Oh, yes. Yep. 
hit start now. Boom, there you go. So that's wireless Android Auto. Uh, let's just try something. So we'll go to YouTube um, and play something. All right, so we'll just play anything here at this point. And uh, hit play and then change the aspect and there it is. So let's get into some of the other features on this radio. Let's hit the matrix on the left hand corner. We've already went through some of these features here. Uh, but as you can see, this gives you all your sources, okay? And if you scroll to the right, you have more to choose from. Now this has your audio standby. And then as you can see, there's icons that are not lit up. And those are reserved for the iDatalink Maestro piece. So obviously, if you program your iDatalink Maestro piece, and you have climate controls or parking assist that came up on the factory radio, it will now populate on this radio. Okay, so on your source page, as you can see, everything populates here. You have the wireless mirroring, USB mirroring, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, CD slash DVD, iPod, USB, AV input. That's important if you wanted to do an overhead monitor for the kids in the back. You're able to mirror what's on the back monitor up to the screen. Then you have your radio, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, telephone. All right, so let's go to audio. So when you hit audio, this is what you get for the setup. And right now we're selected at front speakers. And then if you tap that, then you're able to select the size speakers you have in your vehicle. Then you can do it to the rears as well. And then you could also pick the size subwoofer that you have. And then here is crossover. And then you want to select here on the top front. So that's your front crossover. Right now it's set to through and you can select anywhere from 30 Hertz all the way up to 250. And then you can also pick the slope up to 24, as low as six. And then if you do your rear, same thing, same frequency, same slope, subwoofer, as low as 30, as high as 250. Or you can just choose to run through. And then if you have external amplifiers, then you would just use the crossovers on the app and then you have your equalizer so you have a 13 band equalizer you can adjust this in a couple of different ways if you touch the band you want to adjust and then hit the up and down to adjust it so on your eq if you're not familiar the more right you go are the higher frequencies so you can see 16k and then the more left you go is going to be your base 62 100 160 and then also for adjustment you can just run your finger across it then you also have the base EXT on here as well. And then a subwoofer control up to 10. And I think this thing goes down pretty far negative, um, like negative 40 or something like that. All right. And then of course you have your balance true fade and then your volume offset. So this gives you the ability to choose the volume for each source. And the reason why this would be important is let's say for instance, your Bluetooth it plays lower than the radio or plays lower than the CD. Then you're able to go in here and adjust this higher so that when you switch sources, it's more even. Okay. Then you have zone control. So zone control is a pretty cool feature. Right now it's set to single. You can set it to dual. Now, if you do dual, you can have the speakers in the front play something different than the speakers in the rear. Now, where this would be useful is if you had that video system we talked about and the kids want to watch a movie and they don't want to put headphones on, um, then you can go audio video in and then that will play the DVD that's playing on in the back and in the front you can choose your radio or your XM or your Bluetooth or your iPod or if you want to play everything AV in as well so to play on all four speakers so that's really cool all right so that's that now let's go into some of the setup features so I'm gonna hit the sprocket here and then I'll go to display okay and from here we can choose the key color so if you want to match whatever dash lights green Switch to the green if they're like a light blue or aqua. Switch it to that color. Go back. You could also switch the wallpaper. So there's a couple presets here. Carbon fiber, like a brush look, space. So we'll just leave it at carbon fiber. Okay. And then you have the, uh, the camera. Oh, the camera settings will allow you to basically go in here and you can set up guidelines for your backup camera. Uh, turn them on or off you want to do the interruption and then you could also assign cameras as well because you do have those four camera inputs that we talked about all right 
and then special. All right, it always defaults at demo, so you probably wanna turn the demo off. And then from here, you can check the software information. Now that's important if you wanted to update your software. Now to update the software, you do have to go to Kenwood's website and you're able to update the software there. And then you can also check versions to make sure you have the latest version. Another thing too, just as a tip, if the radio gets a little glitchy, check the software to see if you got the latest version. All right, so let's go back. Radio, pretty straightforward. Tune here, presets are here. So if you like a station, hold the button down for a couple seconds, that'll lock that in, just like that. Okay, that's pretty much it. So overall, this is a great radio and has lots of versatility and is pretty easy to use. It's an excellent value coming in about $699, which is in line for most wireless head units. Okay, so on to pros and cons. Pros, three sets of four volt pre-outs, which is great when adding amplifiers. Four camera inputs, good for adding additional cameras. And of course, the wireless features. Okay, cons, not many here besides the extra few steps you have to do when doing the iPhone mirror. Okay, above and below, what's the difference? Okay, so below this unit is a DDX5707S. Now the difference is you only get a 6.8 inch monitor versus a 6.95 inch monitor. Single camera input, you only get five channel, two volt pre-outs opposed to six channel, four volt pre-outs. No high resolution audio, no eye data link maestro capabilities, and none of the wireless features. So you lose a lot with that, but it's only priced at $369 versus $699. Okay, so now above. Now the above unit is the Exelon DDX9907XR. Now in this unit, you get five volt pre-outs versus four volt pre-outs, a higher pixel count at 1280 times 720 versus 800 times 480, and then high resolution, both on wired and wireless connections. So that unit goes for $899 versus $699. So overall, we give this radio a 4.5 star rating based on other units priced in this category and an overall value and ease of use. Now, if you would like one of these three cards, just click the link in the description below and that'll take you directly to the product page. We do have easy financing available. Just apply online and get approved instantly. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Oh, and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching.